Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on our Deadpool Funko Pop character. In today's session we'll be working on the legs and just sorting them so they fit in with the torso nicely. Do remember to check out the links in the description for other useful playlists from my channel and the links to my character course which takes you from nothing right through to a game ready character with rigging animation ready for a game engine. Okay so here's where we got up to last time and we want to work on the legs. Let's bring back our reference images so Alt H and these can easily be found on Google, just type in Deadpool Funko Pop and the side image is in the link in the description. Let's go to the front view first and zoom in a touch. I'll select the torso and we'll just extrude out from the torso. We don't need to create a hole because the legs are fairly simple. So I'll go into edit mode, into face mode with three and just select these faces down here. Back to front view, E to extrude. And let's just pull it down to the knee to start off with. We can add more topology later and G to grab, R to rotate and move that roughly into position. He doesn't have to have such a wide stance as this, but actually this is slightly helpful when it comes to rigging to have a nice space between each thigh so we don't get any weighting issues. I'll talk more about that later. E to extrude down from here and I'm actually going to scale Z zero so it flattens it out. E to extrude from here down to the bottom of the shoes. Then I'll select these two front faces, come around to side view, and E to extrude them out. Looks a bit rubbish at the moment, we need a bit of adjusting to do, but it's best to do it at this point and then add more topology rather than having lots of topology to move around. So let's go into X-ray mode to start off with, and the legs need to be a lot thinner, so I'll grab these, G to grab and move them in, and then I'll go to edge mode, grab this edge here and G to grab and move it forwards so there's a slight bend in the knee. And we'll just start adjusting the shape so it matches the side image a little bit more. Our side image isn't great because the bum part is a bit higher on this model, I think, than it is on Deadpool. But every now and again you'll want to move around your model and see what's going on, see what bits you have selected. I probably want to move these in just a touch and then go to face mode and kind of move his bum out a touch as well. Select those two, G to grab in the Y. Whenever you're not in side view or front view, it's a good idea to constrain to either the X or Y. Then you're not sort of pulling it across into each other and all sorts. Okay, so we've got a slight curve on the bum. Bring these back just a touch. Make sure these are all scaled Z zero. And we need the front to come back a little bit. So I'll select those two edges here and just G to grab. Now I'm in side view, I can just press G to grab and it will constrain it to the Y axis. Okay, so that looks reasonably okay, but if I go back to solid mode so you can see, it's a bit square and there's issues around the place which certainly need to be sorted out. The best way in my opinion to sort this out is to actually take off the subdivision surface modifiers. So I'll minimize the mirror for the moment and so you can see the subdivision surface modifiers there and I'll go to the display window here. Now it looks all over the place, doesn't it? So first of all, I think it will be helpful to actually do another loop cut in here for the shoes and then select this loop around here, scale Z zero to flatten that out and move it up. Start pulling these out. I'm pressing G then shift Z so it doesn't move in the Z axis. It's a bit square at the moment as well. So edge mode, I'll select these three, GG to edge slide that way and GG to edge slide the other way. And then that sort of rounds the leg out, which you can sort of see there, GG again, and give it a bit more roundness. It's not so bad on this one going down here. That looks okay, to be honest. This one certainly needs to come in more, GG. And we've got slight issues here where it joins up. So what I need to do is select these two at the bottom, GG to edge slide, so they come back to there. And GG to edge slide, so they come up a bit. And let's work on these ones now, GG. And I'm going to do a loop cut around the foot as well. So there's not so much impact and stretching going on with this face here. I'm trying to keep it nice and simple. GG to pull that across. And this one as well, GG. And it's a bit more like a foot. Still a little bit blocky in places. GG to edge slide. Uh, for the most part, I'm using edge slide. I find it a little bit easier to create the shape I want. 
Now I'm going to do one more loop cut in here. Control R, double click, and Control R, double click there as well. So only do that once you've got the shape a bit more rounded. And let's just start modifying so it matches up more with the background. GG to etch slide, remember. And now I can start modifying this. Still sticking out too far. I'll just go to front view and see that what the reference image is doing. It's a little bit tricky to follow the reference image on some of this. You don't really want to stick your feet out to the side because you can do that when you're rigging. And it's best to rig it when the feet are pointing forwards. Okay, I'll go into x-ray mode and just tidy up a touch. I'm going to tidy these up a little bit as well, just so they're the right shape. They're a little bit narrow. Let's work on his bum a bit. Pull that one up. I'll drag this one in, GG, and up slightly, GG. So we've got a bit of a bum going on there. Uh, G then Z on this one, and G then X on this one. Again, because I'm not actually in back view, so I'm constraining to the axes. G then X for this one as well. So we've got a sort of a bum shape there. GG, smooth that out just a touch. Now it looks a little bit unusual. I might have to drag these up very slightly and maybe do another loop cut around here and start pulling this out to give him more of a bum and then even these out. And on these two, I'll use the smooth vertex again. That's in the vertex menu and it's quite a handy tool just for smoothing things out. Just smooth that up slightly and tidy up the shape. Okay, so let's bring back the subdivision surface modifier and see how we're doing. And that's all looking fine. Just a bit of adjustment to do at the front here. Should be an x-ray mode for that actually. You do want a slight bend on the leg, as I've said before. But we're looking all right here. I'll select the front one here and just pull it out slightly. Bit of a bulge there. And pull those up. Let's come out of x-ray mode, see how it's all going. And that looks okay. I feel like it needs a bit of a butt lift. And I could probably bring these ones down just for a bit of support there, a supporting loop that is. And I can bring this one and this one in a bit more and up a bit more. And G then X on these ones and G then Y. Let's hide the reference images so we can just quickly see how his bum's looking. And it looks a little bit small at the moment, so we'll just stick those out a bit more. There we go, and in a bit more. Probably too much of a crease now. Slowly get there. That's a bit better. I'll move these ones outwards, G then X, and then it's a wider bump. And it's making more sense now. Still a little bit square and lumpy around the place, so I can select these and again, smooth vertex, or smooth vertices in this case. And that's fine. I might do the same for these. So Alt A to deselect all, and I'll just C to circle select some of these. And vertex, smooth vertex. And I'll do the same here again. On the smooth vertices, you've got an option to increase the strength there, which might help you. And I can press Shift R to repeat the last if I want it smoothed out a bit more. And I'll select these ones and do the same. I'd like a shortcut for smooth vertex. If you right click, you can add to quick favorites. And then when you press Q for quick favorites, you've got smooth vertex there. Now what we might need for animation is perhaps another loop cut in here. But that is debatable because you have got quite a lot of topology with your subdivision surface modifier anyway. So you'll probably be all right. But again, if you want a bit more detail, it's kind of worth seeing how you go with that one. I'll just edge slide that out a little bit more and I can afford to smooth some of these vertices out as well now. So Q to quick favorites, smooth vertex. and just a bit more smoothing and G then Y. So just a bit of adaptation and fiddling around until you get the right shape. You're looking for a nice sort of bend at the knee and just a general nice looking shape as you see fit. Now lastly with the shoes, I think this aspect here, actually these ones here, G then X. You can probably do another loop cut here and then we can start smoothing these out a bit more, G, G but we've got a little bit of a stretching where the pole is there, as you can see. But it's pretty minor and it won't make much difference. I'll right click Shade Smooth so you can see the final result. And when you animate, that will obviously crease anyway. Okay, so there we go, some legs. Hopefully this is all making sense. If you've got any questions, then do comment below or any ideas as well.
Lots of people have asked whether I'll be animating it and I'll probably do some basic animation, yes. And for rigging, I will be using Rigify just because it's so much easier. In terms of fingers, there's no real need to do fingers for Deadpool because he's got his swords, but I'll probably talk in the next episode about how you can add fingers if you need to. And maybe I'll just add them for the sake of it this time. If you do want to see the fingers done, then comment below. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.